<clears throat> I apologize for the quietness. Um, to be honest, I get so nervous and I'm afraid to uh, stutter my way through the video. Um, so I'm hoping that you guys will just appreciate, you know, just the attempt at watercoloring. I'm using the Johanna Basford Worlds of Wonder adult coloring book. And my gosh, this book is just so amazing. It takes all the watercolor techniques that I've thrown at it from really thick washes to multiple super light layers. It just, it's really, really good. And I thought maybe I'd make a video just showcasing uh, some of that. Now, obviously I'm not going for, you know, perfect um, color uh, mixing here. This is just my way of doing things. As you can see, I'm practicing here and I'm really enjoying this infamous lemon page. <laughs> Please excuse any background noise. That's just my son playing with his toys. What I'm doing is just adding darker color to where those little lines are. I'm letting myself be guided by that. And I'm not too sure, but I'm thinking this will be the lightest part of our leaf here. I'm just going to go all the way from left to right as steady as possible. And then blend. What I did to get this color green here is I used whatever I had left over from this yellow color and mixed it in with a bit of olive green. I didn't even wash my brush. The brush I'm using now is a number eight Hobby Lobby brand Master's Touch Synthetic Round Sable. Synthetic Sable Round. <laughs> One or the other, right? All right, so I'm trying to go purposely loose here, as you can see. And again, I'm not going for perfect, um, you know, color. I didn't look at a lemon tree or anything like that before I began. I was just brave enough to press the record button and begin to talk. I was actually going to not say a word, but honestly, this is just so nice. I'm going to go ahead and bring in a bit more green into this, to this leaf right here. Clean my brush off just a bit. Maybe add a bit more of that. Oh, that. That is pretty. Look at that. Adding a bit of the yellow from the lemon to the leaf. That's really pretty. Just using the secondary brush to blend it out. This is the number six Princeton Neptune. So I decided that this book will be my tester book. And if any pages come out successful, then that's a bonus. Because I definitely plan to buy another, another book and be more, more specific with the blending, you know, more, more purposeful, be real careful and all that good stuff. So I look forward to that. 
There's another page in here that has um, all the little houses. I've been using that too to help me with the blending. So this is a great way to incorporate what I love to do so much, which is watercolor, into this newfound hobby of adult coloring book pages. So far, so good. Okay, we're we're doing pretty good with time. I'm thinking we, or I, <laughs> can go ahead and let's see. My son can be a bit loud at times when he plays. Now he's seven, so I really don't know what seven-year-old boy or child, really, that isn't loud. Well, at least mine is. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to bring that over. What a gorgeous, deep, rich color, huh? This color is called Goldenrod. It's so pretty. It's by White Knights. And I do believe there's a little bit of granulation going on, too. I'm not going to get into the details of the flowers around because I don't want to make the video too, too long. I like to keep it in real time. I notice as the August days um, continue, there's less light coming in through my back, my back dining room window, or my dining room window in the back. Peak summer, I was able to stay here until literally 8 something at night. Now, I'm lucky if 7.30, there's still decent lighting for, for coloring. I'm going to go ahead and just bring a little bit more of that color right underneath here because it's just, I absolutely love, love it. Okay, and with my already wet brush, and I'm working with very little color. And I just bring in this color into there for the leaves like I am now, wet onto wet. Allow that color to just seep in, let it just come into the area, let it be one with the lemon. <laughs> it's really pretty. Okay, and then you can always wash off your main brush and blend, but I love having a secondary brush. I spent a lot of time this past year working on this technique. I'm even going to bring a little bit of the green down here because why not? And what I do to one, I must do to the other. <laughs> okay. And usually what I do is I just add um, darker value to the areas that are just, you know, tucked under something, folded, creased, you know, anything like that. That seems to be a good, a good guide for me. And always remember, because I also have to try to remember that watercolor dries back quite a few shades lighter than what you put down no matter what so use that to your advantage if you uh go in the full opaque value that might be a little harder to work with so i don't recommend that 
even though I do love to go dark to light as well. But I've spent some time practicing, so I feel pretty confident in doing that. I think this goes all the way up here, right? Well, it does now. Okay, so got a couple things going on here, so let me go ahead and kick it up a notch with this gorgeous, gorgeous green. I notice the cooler greens are usually the best way to go with these uh, lemon or this lemon page. Up here I did a little bit of cool and warm. And what is this color called here? Uh, julep. Very pretty color. That is a handmade color, handmade watercolor, and that is from Mrs. Hand Painted. So I'm going to do just some very simple blending techniques here. I'm not going to go, you know, into everything, you know, too, too much. And I know I'm not going to bother with this one. I'm going to just save that for, for doing it on my own. And I think a more pointier, smaller brush might help me because the Princeton is fine, but it has a soft, round tip. Where this brush right here is a pointy tip, so it does make a difference. Another thing that makes a difference is flipping your page upside down, right side up. It might be a pain in the butt, but it does make a difference because you're able to really get in This makes it easier for myself. Okay. And I notice right here we have these darker lines. So I'm assuming that's an indication to go in and do some light shading. This is why for me it's easier when I flip my book or my page upside down. You can obviously see I tore this page out. These pages are perforated so I did not <laughs> I didn't uh, disrespect the book. Um, there's other other books that you cannot tear the pages out and it turns the book all wonky but in the Johanna Basford and the Creative Haven books you can tear them out it makes it easier so two brushes going at the same time here and our Tegria number four for those little bits and this number eight going back in at the bottom there using the side belly of my brush here to clean things up I'm going for a very soft smooth blend here you can also come right here bit extra. Sometimes taking from another area and bringing it into here helps with the blending. Really pretty, very soft. Yeah, I'm going to add a little bit more right here. Just a little bit. And then come in with the larger Princeton. 
and just do a very gentle tapping of color. This seems to be the highlight area for this lemon, so I will try my best to preserve it. And since this area is so close to the leaf, why not go ahead and add a bit more green? Let's go ahead and do the same thing right here. I don't know what it is, but I'm really, really liking this. Isn't that pretty? I love it. Having that secondary brush full of color and water is very helpful. Just a glaze and pull up. You can even use your white highlighter uh, pen to draw a white line right there. I'm going to actually come over here be a bit more brave with the green. Just see all these little dots down here. I'm like, put more color, put more color. Okay, and let's uh, go back to Let's go back to the leaf here. Oh, one thing I do that seems to work really well for me is adding um, an indigo-ish color to my green to darken it up. And just like that, I added a bit of the Windsor and Newton. This one is the Professional. I have both the Professional and the Cotman and they're just amazing. You add just a little bit of that to your leafy green choice of color and it just makes a huge difference it begins to come in here and add darker shading up here and add some darker value there too still working upside down I know let's go ahead and flip this the right side look at that that just I don't know just looks pretty awesome let's go ahead and add just a little bit the tip right here This brush has seen better days, but it's still working like a charm, so I'm not going to have it go anywhere. I'm going to come here at the bottom and add just a little bit. You can see it's like constantly touching up areas little by little. At least that's the way I work. I know everyone works differently and that's, that's just fine. what you would call a patience tester or from what I understand a patience strengthener someone told me my pages look like that or at least the Teresa Goodridge, Goodridge uh, pages that I did look like their patience strengthening pages and uh, I took it as a compliment All right, so let's come over here and add just a little bit right here because once you start, you cannot stop. <laughs> All right, so oh, right here, need a little bit of that, a little bit of extra. Bring it down. 
and let's add a bit more of the green because we need more green. Okay. And then right here where these two fold, just a little bit. And then push up. Make a natural divide right there. And of course I'm going to add some more green. Of course. I've actually been falling head over heels in love with all the greens lately. And I don't mind. Alright, so I'm going to, let's see. Yep, right here. Uh, just look all the way at the bottom here, guys. Right here, okay? Bear with me. bringing some of that in right there and upside down again because again repetition 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 <laughs> and after this we should be good we should be good I haven't begun to add pencil details because if I'm being 100% transparent um, I'm having a really hard time with the Prismas I seem to get along better with the Pruners so I'm currently seeing what those will be like on you know my pages that are already done with the watercolor I just find that I can cover a much larger surface area with my brushes. I prefer watercolor, period. Um, it's taken me three years to get to where I'm at right now. I'm certainly no expert, but I feel very comfortable calling myself a watercolor artist or a heavy duty enthusiast. <laughs> and um, why do I have to add more green? Why? Why? Why not? Because when you add more green, everything looks better. <laughs> there you go, see? A nice highlight area right there. Very beautiful. We can even begin to add the details right here of this one. Go ahead and just re-wet my, my brush here. Looks like we need a little extra oomph. getting this one ready to receive some deeper deeper color here definitely have to work on this one a bit more and I'll go ahead and I'll Add some darker color here at the bottom. It's easier for me to layer colors when I already have that primary layer of color down. There is a name for it and I believe it's called an underwash. I don't know if that's specific to oil or acrylic but I think that that would be fair to say that that's a great a great way to describe what I do first. Just 
just adding some detail there. Yes, I'm adding green there too. <laughs> I can't help it. All right, I think we did pretty good. Looks like I'm going to have to work on this leaf over here a little bit. On my own. It's going to naturally be darker because it's tucked underneath both my limones but it's looking pretty good pretty good so far all right i'm going to go ahead and thank you if you're still watching now um i guess just another quick demonstration really quickly uh I almost feel like I can strengthen, strengthen, excuse me, up uh, some of this color here. Just a little bit. So using the same brush for applying the darker value and also the same brush for for blending. Highly recommend these uh, these brushes, especially when they go on sale and they're like either 40 or 50 percent off. Seriously, they're great. I use them over my uh, black velvets all the time. I'm sorry, those are just so expensive. They're great, but I don't know. Brushes like these, like the Artegrias. I purchased everything I have at the beginning of the pandemic or that year. So I'd have a hard time uh, beginning any hobby right now with the way things are. So I, re I recommend Artegria. I recommend the local store brand, even the Michaels brand, uh, the Artist Loft, well, they have good brushes too. The Artist Loft with the red handle, those are really good brushes. And those also go on sale as well. As you can see, I'm coming up on 30 minutes. I don't mind. I think you guys will appreciate it, right? Well, if you're watching. Okay, this color here, this is another handmade color. It's called Moab, and it's by Stephanie, who is Sparrow Scribbles. She's known for her metallic and color shifting watercolors. But I was able to pick up this palette also again in 2020. Things were just a little bit more, I don't know, not so expensive. Well, if you can find them. You let me, I will just go on forever and ever. We can even, you know what? We can even come right here and add a bit of the Oh yes, see what happens when you experiment? A little bit of that Moab to the leaves, or at least this leaf. And it just highlights everything, so I know what color to use. And it will add just a little bit of variety. And let's go ahead and look at that. Just a little bit. Don't need too much. And just glaze right over this one here too and that'll just automatically become one of the many layers underneath so when I go and add more detail behind the scenes 
these colors will be waiting for me. Look at that. Beautiful. Look at that. Quick impromptu last minute last minute stuff. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll go ahead and bid you guys a wonderful, let's see what's today, Monday. A wonderful rest of your Monday, wherever you are. Thank you for watching, if you are. And, uh, all right. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.